Hey everyone, it's Ace here from All Cool Entertainment. And in this video, I'm going to be reviewing Only Murders in the Building Season 1, which you can check out on Hulu right now. This show is a comedy, crime drama, mystery, and thriller all wrapped in one. I typically don't like murder mystery type shows. However, I think the comedy here is what makes it. Comedy and the cast. And I'm not just talking about the main three characters, which are played by Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez. But this has some great supporting cast throughout the series. Tina Fey, Nathan Lane who plays a more serious character in this, but there's still that comedy there. He, I actually would like to see him in more dramatic roles. I think it was really good. I think this was one of his best performances, honestly, and that's saying a lot for Nathan Lane, because you're talking about a legend right there. Someone who's been great in many, 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 many roles. And I think it's because the mix of comedy and drama in this same with Steve Martin and Martin Short. Throughout the season, our three main characters are trying to figure out who murdered Tim Kono. And as the season unfolds, we learn that one of the main characters actually knew Tim Kono. That brings another element of suspense. And there's little things like that that happen throughout the series. The show mainly focuses on Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez's characters who don't know each other at first, but bond over a murder in their building. They all live together in this building called the Arconia, and the three of them somehow find themselves together trying to figure out who murdered this person. And so they come up with this idea to have a podcast about it, which starts to slowly get some exposure nationally, which then blows back at them a little bit from some people who don't want things to be uncovered. I think what I liked about this most was the dark comedy from the main characters, I thought it was really well done here. To see Steve Martin and Martin Short doing a little more darker comedy, I really liked. And also seeing their characters' growth with their personal relationships with their families, I thought they did a really good job. Like, I've seen some things with Steve Martin and Martin Short. I haven't seen everything. But I have seen some of the classics. And these roles are somewhat different for them from what I've seen. The drama elements, they actually do really well. There's a lot of people who come from that... SNL background or comedy background that can't really do the drama thing and not that this is like a super heavy drama series but during the dramatic moments I thought they were fantastic and I really felt for these characters that also goes for Selena Gomez who I had never seen actually act obviously I've heard her music but I had not seen her on TV she did a really good job in her role and like I said the supporting cast I don't want to spoil every big name that shows up because there are quite a few but they all did a great job I think there may have been one or two characters that I didn't quite buy, but overall, I mean, this is a first season of a show. From a visual standpoint, I really liked how the beginning of each episode showed the podcast, the title of the podcast being the title of the episode that you were watching. There was a little bit of meta there, uh, especially in some of the conversations they have, which I thought was very clever. And I liked how when you're watching that opening bar go by, if you actually pause it, the timestamp it's not exactly the same time, but it's like a couple seconds off if it's playing. So for example, if you're watching episode four, maybe again, don't quote me as that exact episode, but if you're watching episode four, when it gets to the title screen, it will show the name of the episode like you're listening to it on a podcast. And then if you look at the bar, it'll actually show the time as like, let's say 305. And as you're watching the episode of the show on Hulu, if you pause it, it'll be at like 303. I thought that was a very cool touch, and that's how it is, I think, for every episode, except there's one or two maybe where the episode is paused, like the podcast episode is paused. So um, I'm wondering now, if I went back, maybe you can do this, and went to the episodes that are paused and went to those times in the episode, there was some sort of significant clue. That'd be pretty cool. If they didn't do it this season, they should definitely do it next season. If I am to criticize in any way, the opening sequence doesn't make sense because it shows them going up the building, and according to that first elevator scene, they don't live in those floors that they, unless I'm mistaken, but I'm pretty sure that they don't live on the floors that they show. I don't know. That's another minor, minor, minor gripe. Art department, you better fix it next season or I'm not watching. No, that's not true. Of course I'm watching. There's also an episode that involves a deaf character and it was, I really like what they did there. I, I don't want to go too much into spoilers, but I really like what they did there. So I do think this show will have a cult following though. I don't think this show is for everyone. I think it's a little quirky. Other criticisms would include, like I said, some of the characters just didn't work. They felt too unrealistic to comic-y they leaned more on the comedy and not so much in the drama i really didn't like that the characters that balanced the drama and comedy were definitely my favorites 
And like I said, that is most of them. There's maybe about a handful of characters that didn't work for me. And also another big critique was the finale. I actually really liked the finale. I gave it a four out of five. I just wish that some of the things they showed in the finale sort of moved along a little faster. I don't want to get into it too much here if you haven't seen it yet, but I don't like how some of the characters handled themselves figuring out who the killer was when relaying that information to other characters. Anyway, I don't want to get too deep into it, but I had some problems there, but otherwise, solid finale, solid season. Very excited for season two, but I'm going to give this one a four out of five. Like I said, it's pretty good. It does have some problems with some of the characters. However, the overall story was very good. Have you watched only murders in the building let me know what you think about this show or if you have any other suggestions for me uh, for shows i should review definitely let me know even if you disagree with my opinion if you enjoyed this video please make sure to like share and subscribe it'll help me out a lot and i will see you in the next video you have a great day oh wow one quick thing as i was looking up some clips i found a featurette talking about episode 7 the boy from 6b which is about theo theo is deaf and the whole episode is a silent episode it's my favorite episode it's an amazing episode and one of the best of this series if not one of the coolest episodes of a tv show i've ever seen and out of this whole series i thought that theo actually had the strongest performance out of everyone what i didn't realize is that james caverly the actor who plays theo is actually deaf in real life this is incredible like huge props to him i i can't imagine how difficult that must have been and to have a performance like that especially when you're up against some of these big names that's incredible this guy has a great career ahead of him i hope this opens up some doors for him because that is just unbelievable and i think it's really cool that the show did this so huge 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 props for that <laughs>